the Spectrum truck was in our neighborhood this week. <laughs> That's always a good sign when the internet people come to say, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming we're live now because I can see faces on the screen. Uh, how is it going, everybody? Welcome. Are they familiar faces? I mean, there are faces, so. Are there worn out places? Oh, God. Here we go. <laughs> this is the most yeah. my Also, yes, now we're actually on screen. We'll do the, that double group ha hydrate from Agni. Yeah. Okay, but now that we're visible, everybody drink water twice. I like your water water. <sighs> there you go. You're welcome. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to session one of Bankar Bruhaha. I'm DM Corvée, or Emily in the human world. Uh, welcome. This is going to be a weird, fun summer short shot. Um, oh yeah, I'm supposed to like tell where you can find me and stuff. Um, I will be DMing this wonderful thing. You can see me on this channel fairly regularly, usually on Friday evenings. But this summer, you'll also see me every other Tuesday, um, uh, along with these wonderful people. And they're now going to introduce themselves. Who wants to go first? See, I... I'm Maggie, you know Maggie Cool One. You can find me at Hollowwise on Twitter or TikTok, but not on Instagram because I could not get it. It's all a disaster. I rarely post on there, but I'm really cool. I'm here Monday, every other Tuesday, Friday, and sometimes at other times. Who knows? Passed your check from Agni. Oh my God, That's I, what I literally on. just sat down. The posture is not messed up yet. <laughs> Thank you. Who's next? Go in order. Oh, what's the order? According to the screen. And then is we... it me? Or is it Sophia? Know. Okay, I'll go. Yeah. Um I'm <laughs> I'm Alyssa. You can find me on Instagram at Alyssa B underscore illustrations. Um I am a multidisciplinary artist and you can also find me here on Fridays um with a few of these folks. Uh, and that's about it. Excellent. Wait. So I guess that's me? Sure. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I'm Rick. I'm the Game Master for the Hammer of the Gods podcast. We're here sometimes, not really lately, but we will be again soon. Uh, you can find me pretty much anywhere you find uh, Ampod. Awesome. I'm Kayla. I am one half of the Potions and Potpourri podcast, which is like a chad cat chasual. Chasual. <laughs> a, a casual chat podcast um, where we talk about stuff and are really bad with words on that show too. Um, find us wherever you get your podcast, and also you can find me in Rick's game um, starting up again soon. And then also in the Cantrips and Coffee Spell German stream. Also get some cool Back Tear Pride merch this month. Woo. And also a cool shirt that Rick has on. <laughs> You're muted, Rick. It's fine. You were talking. Me. And Sophia, who's very graciously once again running our stream this evening. I am um, Sophia. You can find me on as Rock Chick Sophia on pretty much all the socials and here on Twitch. I am the DM of uh, A Song of Crystal and Shadow on Thursdays. You can find me here on Tuesdays and I do other random funny shite here and there. And yes, I'm 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 the I'm the one of the well I was gonna say one of the tech people, but you know, I'm sure Effie or Artemis will yell at me if there's something wrong. Like last time with those that 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 frame rate problem. Yeah, it's all right. It worked out. Fine. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's our group. That's our party. I'm gonna go through some quick announcements. There's a lot of announcements this week because June is busy. So, uh, first of all, our sponsor for tonight is Canadian Dice. Go to CanadianDice.ca and use the code the all one word 
at checkout for 10% off your order. Uh, Maggie, what is your dice pick of the week? Rainbow, because I like rainbows. There's no other reason why rainbows might be important that you could segue into the next segment with. <laughs> Happy Pride! Um, yeah, that what? does segue very nicely into the next thing. We are currently raising money for the Trevor Project, which is an organization that helps LB LGBTQIA2S plus youth and provides 24-7 crisis support services now available in Mexico as well as the United States. So that's awesome. Um, you can donate by following the link, which I believe is at the top of our chat. Um, if you like even numbers like I do, fix what Affy just did, or what Agni just did, and uh, make that 101 go away. Um, and give us money. Not us. Give them money. They need it. Um, especially <laughs> in the United States. Where everything is going wrong. Fine. Everything's fine here. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, also, check out our merch store at tinyurl.com forward slash back merch. You can get excellent designs like the one that Kayla's wearing right now. Um, also, <laughs> like Half Work Energy, the VAC Blob. Um, Pride merch is now up, and any money raised from our Pride merch this month will be donated directly to the Trevor Project as well. All right, and then for our schedule for the week, tomorrow, Affy and Artemis will be over on Goodman Games at 9 p.m. Eastern, I assume, with Judge Jeremy, Ryan Cedar, and Jeff for more Mutant Crawl Classics. This week's special guest is Tim from Stronghold D&D. &D. On Thursday, we have a song of Crystal and Shadow with DM Sophia at 8.30 Eastern Time. If you like D&D and you also like Final Fantasy, it's a great game. They also happen to have some open seats. Is it two at the moment? Two. Yep. Two. Um, so if you want to join and play in a really cool Final Fantasy D&D &D game, uh, let us know. And then on Friday, we have no Fix ES5. Uh, instead, at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, we will be holding a special one-shot of Cirque du Solis, which was written by Jeremy and Ryan of Canadian Dice. Uh, Jeremy of Old Men Rolling Dice and Ryan of Canadian Dice. And we're very excited to playtest this with Jeremy running the show. I get to be in it, so I'm very excited. You mean you get to die. Um, I okay. already died in it once. I'm very excited <laughs> to die in it again. <laughs> Such a privilege. <laughs> it's an honor, really. Um, Saturday morning at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time is Together Among the Stars with Rick. And this week's guest is Asparagus93, which might hey. be in the chat. I Are think you so. in the chat? Maybe. Maybe. Um, and then uh, now I have to find my announcements again. Okay. Sunday... Affy and Artemis will be on DM Jeremy's channel for more Legacy of Fire at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And then finally, we will be back here on Monday for more Mistwalkers at 8.30 p.m. with DM Affy. I think that's all I have for announcements. Does anyone else have anything before we get started? Hello, local frogs. <laughs> I'll add one thing. Ex well, ex except for this cat. Hello, Donna. Why are you scratching up my chair? Um, Tuesday, 8.30ish. Pride Month one shot. We're running Super Gay Monty Python, Rick and Alyssa and Maggie uh, with me. And also Cedar, actually, uh, to do some fun medieval reenactment BS that's also super gay. So we're ready. We're raising funds for the we're raising funds for the Trevor Project that night. So come come watch us play test the new Monty Python role playing game and do gay things. Is that that's a week from tonight? Yeah, week from tonight. Yep. So it's on awesome. it's on our off week and on my birthday as well. So I'm running shit on my birthday. So now you have to come check it out because yeah. it's on <laughs> Sophia's birthday. Yeah. And yeah, it sounds really fun. Water yeah. possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The best birthday gift, hydration. 
<laughs> so important. Yeah. It carries all you right. through to a new year. Well then, if that's all, I guess we can jump in. I was really tempted to pull a Matt Mercer thing and be like, to the next episode of Vancouver Brew, ha ha, but... <laughs> Okay, it's we'll okay. say that's the intro. That <laughs> yeah, we uh, started already, so... Yeah. But what it... happened last time on Dragon Ball Z? <laughs> I've never watched that show. So I have no idea. It's <laughs> <laughs> It's It's okay. As we all know, I wasn't allowed to watch Disney, but I was allowed to watch anime. Because Disney has magic, and anime doesn't have magic in it at all, especially not Jericho. Everybody knows that. Or demons, <laughs> yeah. or spirits, or anything. If there's anything. one thing I know about anime, it's that it's super chill. Yeah, it has no magic. <laughs> you know what does have magic, though? Red Cobra, huh? I think. It's true. <laughs> Very it's magical true. world. It has a problem. Um. Yeah. Wait, That's what if what if we were Goths meets Sloth? I think we need a sticker design now for this. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. We're starting now. This is the beginning. <laughs> Please, somebody clip that. That was amazing. <laughs> this is the beginning. Okay, sorry. Uh, shout out to RuPaul. It's a bright, clear day in the nation of Nellis today. The sky is blue, and there is not a cloud to be seen. It is so clear that even the planetary rings that circle Bankar are nearly invisible right now, tracing faint translucent lines in an arc above the continent of Nastir. Below, amid a broad swath of green fields, sits a singular island at the edge of a massive river delta. This is the delta of the River Immortal. While most of the delta is flat sloping land, green and yellow with fully ripened crops, this island is solid stone, pale, sandy, and yellow in color. Towers rise over the island in the same pale yellow stone with accents of clear glass, barely tinted aqua green, a part of nearly every building glistening in the daytime light. I say daytime light because there's no sun to speak of or moon at night, but we can get into that later. Uh, further in the distance, past the edge of the river delta, is the sweeping sea. Constantly raging winds sweeping waves up across the coastline and then off to the northeast, away from the coast of Nastir. But the sea and its waves are not of interest to us, at least not right now. Instead, we zoom in on the bustling city in the river delta on a singular island of stone. This is the city of Rest, a massive seaport and global trading hub. It is the largest city on this continent, and it is the capital of this nation of Nellis. It's also one of the largest cities in the entire world, like think New York City, very big, uh, but fantasy style, medieval, kind of magical, like you do. And it's in this large city that we find the members of our party out doing whatever it is they might decide to do after having made a shipment and gotten paid. They've been here for a week. Don't know what they've gotten up to, but we can see what they're up to now. I have a D5. I've numbered you all. So we're gonna see who goes first. Also, if you need a D5 DCC dice. It's yeah, literally D5. Cool. It literally yeah. is, yeah. They have all yeah. kinds of weird numbers. That's true. We played with uh, used all kinds of when we played. Oh, that nice. would work too. I know in roll 20 you can roll like odd Yeah, I think that's stuff. what we did when we played with Jeremy. All right. I rolled a 4, which means Rick. Of course it does. <laughs> <laughs> what is your character up to after You've been stuck here for a week, waiting for some package before so, you can go back to Tansa. Uh, unbeknownst to Sploth or obviously anyone in the party, because we haven't known each other all that long, uh, any chance that Alaxon gets, he actually uh, he is basically apprenticing with apothecaries uh, just to learn about like medicine and that sort of thing. Uh, but 
when he's not doing that, he's definitely drinking. So, you know. Let's see. Would you imagine that you're apprenticing right now or drinking right now? Maybe a bit of both, you know. Drinking with the apothecary after a day of <laughs> apprenticing? Okay. Um, would you imagine that you would be near the inn or far from the inn? Uh, maybe even at the inn. Maybe oh, know, okay. everyone else kind of left and did other stuff and maybe yeah. we decided to do it here today. So the inn is uh, called the Bleach Bone. It's owned by this very tall, slim, kind of um, gaunt looking pale tiefling man. Um, and his name is Vashon Sell. Um, he looks like if John Waters was a tiefling. Um, so like pencil thin mustache, um, kind of swept back hair with like horns that also like follow the curve of his head very closely. Um, his building does not match the city. The city has a lot of like curving smooth lines. Everything is very tall and this kind of sandy yellow. He has this like rectangular pavilion that is whitewashed. Um, it's called the Bleached Bone and it's a very small inn but it's also one of those places that's like if you know, you know it's really nice. Um, and this guy is a friend of Claude's so that's how you all got a room here. Um, and he's just sort of milling about, doing his thing he acts a little stuck up, but like he's actually kind of a nice person. Um, and he does have a number of very interesting concoctions, both alcoholic and alchemical. Um, and he's friends, most likely, with the uh, fellow you've been apprenticing with. Sure. Um, what was his name again? Bashan Sell. It's just sort of very snooty. And, but sassy. like, kind of sassy, too. <laughs> John Waters voice? I don't know how to do John. I mean, it, it's Boston. Like, not Boston. Um, I saw her getting ready to do East, it. <laughs> East Coast, kind of normal. <laughs> I don't know yeah, how to do John Waters' normal. voice. Yeah, fine. Just make him Irish. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna make him vaguely French. <laughs> yeah. Totally. <laughs> um, and I would say as you are getting ready, like you finished a day of work you're getting ready to sit down for an afternoon of drinking and you get these little like flashes in your mind occasionally there's like this weird memory of like waves of rats and insects just kind of sweeping over the land and then some sort of flash of like weird shadowy creatures and then a flash of like pitch black enclosed space where you can't really move you're just kind of stuck here yeah it's a, it's a good time yeah uh, and that's when you get to drink <laughs> <laughs> that's you know how it goes sometimes uh yeah so uh you, you mentioned like the special concoctions mm -hmm. i would like one of each and i'm gonna gonna mix them together oh, uh, oh okay okay sure sure uh one moment and it'll just kind Always of like love hearing that. <laughs> take out a number of differently colored no, like everything is, is like crystal 
and glass. Um, and he's got one of those like fancy lighted shelving units where all the <laughs> bottles are lit from below, but it's magic instead of electricity. Because, uh, you know. Yeah. It's lightning instead of electricity. There you go. But it's like blue lightning, like in Avatar. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and he <laughs> kind of he gets like a fancy like tulip glass and pours a little bit of a bunch of different things into this glass and you end up with something that's got like it's like kind of brown with like silvery swirls in it and it kind okay. of lights up occasionally with sparks it smells real strong <laughs> yeah I just kind of look at it for a long long second or two and then I just down it it tastes weird <laughs> as you might expect very surprised by that shocking um, but I mean it's effective it does the weird, job weird for how. sure weird how like hmm. it smells a little citrusy but when you taste it it tastes more botanical but there's like a fizz to it too Excuse um me. and so it like tickles your nose and gives you just like very strange sensations up in your head um and then the alcohol hits uh <laughs> and you get just a wave of like a little bit of like like Maybe there's caffeine in this also? You don't know. It's a four logo. <laughs> it's a four logo. Oh my god, no. <laughs> it was his strongest potion. <laughs> it's like an orange lavender four logo based on that description. Delicious. Oh, that sounds so weird. Ooh. Where are my floral four logos? New, new concept. <laughs> <laughs> um. You said you're training with like an apothecary, a, like a apothecary? yeah, like to learn about medicine and medicine. nature, you know, that sort of thing. Um, the person that you're training with is someone who also lives in this neighborhood. He has a very small, narrow shop, and he's just this like little old gnomish man that definitely knows what he's talking about. Right. Um. I should have kept fantasy name generator open is what I should have done. Um, <laughs> I didn't have this person in my sheet. Um, and but um, he's just a little bit like a little bit like scatterbrained but he definitely knows what he's talking about when he's looking into like doing his apothecary thing. But, like, you're discovering very quickly out in the world um, that he's just a little bit, like, very distracted by shiny things. And he's very, like, interested in what's going on around him. And he thinks all the people everywhere are just a little bit funny and, like, comments on people around and what they're doing out loud as he's walking by. Um, reference Avatar again. He just reminds me of King Boomy. Yeah, a little bit, but like real <laughs> short. Yeah. Um, we'll we'll say that his name is Pickle Stick <laughs> Weatherbottom. Weather Love it. Great name, honestly. Pickle Stick <laughs> Weatherbottom. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he has a cousin. I don't know. And he's drinking something kind of vaguely pink. Um, but just like barely, and it's got like an ice cube in it that has okay. a flower in the ice cube. And he's like just sitting there, like looking around and like yeah. Do you have like one of those like swirly straws? 
<laughs> Ooh, he should. Yes, now he does. Cannon. <laughs> he like pulls it out of his own lapel. Oh, of course. Because he's so short that sometimes yeah, it's hard to reach the counter sometimes. <laughs> so he's just like, that's right. He doesn't believe in unnecessary waste. Delightful. I hardly ever get to drink here. Thank you. <laughs> I, you know, I'll drink, drink anywhere. As long as they uh, will get me drunk. That's all I care about. You know, there's very useful uh, use for alcohol as well. And apothecary business. Tinctures and tonics and all sorts of things. Do tell. I uh, start to spouting into like, what if you add some gin and a little bit of juniper and this and that and then uh, maybe a little bit of this specific like mineral and it suddenly becomes very magical. You can, uh, you know, I'm just talking about like potions of heroism and potions of healing and formulas that you've never heard of, even though you've been training with this guy for a week. <laughs> it's like he's already like been teaching you a little bit of this stuff, and he's just like going on and on about things that you're like, that's not what you said two days ago. <laughs> As I'm like referencing my my old notes because I've got this all in a notebook, maybe like two or three notebooks. It sounds like if he's rambling that much but. yeah he just talks and talks and he, like easy to fill the silence for sure with this fellow <laughs> he's just like this. I can do this thing and then that and then if there's a special flower but you can only get it on the cliffs of, of the immortal canyon it's very hard to get so you have to be a very good climber and it's just non-stop yeah, I'm, Word I'm just like nodding and taking notes the whole time that was probably the first like thing that he said to me that he expected a response from. It wasn't really a question so much as, you know, a statement, but yeah, probably a lot of the time it was just him. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Uh, he's a nonstop talker, and he also lives by himself in that little narrow shop, and the only people he sees are his customers. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's weird, you know. It's mostly by themselves and talks to things. Yeah. Well, Axon knows nothing about that. Definitely not. That he's willing to tell anyone else about. <laughs> right. Yeah, so I feel like uh, he probably would not stick around forever, this uh, uh, pickle stick. You know, being older, he's probably not going to want to stay out yeah. and drink all hours of the night. Uh, yeah. So, after he leaves, I'm just still kind of there, sipping on something, and just kind of seemingly talking to myself. Okay. If anyone from the outside happened to see. Um, why don't while you're sitting here by yourself, since for those who missed our session zero, why don't you go ahead and describe? Your yeah. So Alaxon is a dragonborn. Uh, he is an Echo Knight, and I don't remember what kind of armor I gave myself, but it's it's something. Um, but yeah, he's just like a big spiky boy. He's a, a bronze dragonborn, and uh, a little bit paler than average, and wears mostly pretty dark clothing overall, you know, to go with the we're all goths, except for chestnut theme of this game. <laughs> Awesome. Um, I think, like, Vashon, they don't bother you when they hear you talking to yourself. What kind of things are you saying? Uh, mostly it's like they're commenting on the other people. I'm like, no, they're not. They're not looking at us. And, you know, just little things like that that just... He's clearly having a conversation with something else. Just nobody else yeah. sees it. But he's also really not paying attention to anybody, so. Sloth. Yeah, the Sloth is busy. <laughs> I, he's I, out I don't, running errands. And yeah, like he's out <laughs> doing. Being a player. Yeah, he's doing his intern thing while I'm studying. He doesn't know I do this. It's fine. Uh, eventually, uh, Sloth comes back to the inn because this is where your rooms are. 
Um, just this little tiny bullywug fellow and super like, because I think most people picture D&D bullywugs as being like kind of beefy. Uh, this one is not. Uh, he's just very small and he's like, petite. He talks, talks like this and uh, you know, he's just a little bit like, uh, he comes in and he like, he's like picked up the mail for Vashon's in and he like comes up to the counter and like <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. uh, and he like kind of comes up and sits next to you, like tries to climb onto the stool because it's small. <laughs> um, and sits next to you and just kind of looks at you to see if you're like wanting to talk. And I just kind of give him like the side eye and like, did you get everything done? Yeah, I think so. Uh, pretty sure I got. Pretty sure I got it all here. Yeah. yeah. Do you have your checklist? <laughs> um, what advice that I maybe sit down somewhere? I don't know where it is. Yeah, I just take a, I just take a really big drink, a really long drink, and then I just turn and look at him, and I don't say anything, and I just turn back to my drink. I think I'm gonna go to bed. I'm real beat. It's hard to get dark out there, you know. But okay, good night. And he like goes upstairs and goes to bed. <laughs> and I'm just like staring at him the whole way. <laughs> he just kind of looks back like. <laughs> what a good boy. <laughs> Is that all you want to there we go. Uh, to do to yeah I, I, I would say that uh that probably is a good place for me to all right then we're gonna roll a d4 to see who goes next donna jumps the donna donna jumps on me and then she just goes off it's like really cat donna's next no that's such a cat. You go next? I'll pull that. totally <laughs> perceive me okay stop perceiving me bye <laughs> Yeah. It's a very cat thing to do, honestly. Is it Listeria's turn then? Yeah. I rolled your number. Do you start with the introduction then? Um, I would say Yeah, I think like you've been here for a week. You've been can we talked a little bit today about like you've been kind of going around here and there. You've been looking for fine eating, which yeah. you have found. Uh, I, have, I have proven myself as the throat goat of the oyster eating scene while I've been here. Yeah, yeah. Are, um, you, are you sure that's the word you want to go with? That is my title. I have a sash. <laughs> um, you it's did like find... A, a, you know, traditional name, right, Emily? No comment. <laughs> you whole broke up. <laughs> um, I'd say you found a uh, you found a restaurant that's like right on the edge of where the docks come up to the central covered market. There's there's a covered market in the center of rest that takes up like the whole center of the city, and it's covered all just in like glass pavilions, but then it's open air on the sides. Um, and just at the edge of it, as leading up to the docks, is a restaurant called the Mother of Pearl. Uh, it's a fine seafood restaurant. Uh, the owner's name is, uh, the owner is a Triton named Grissom. Um, and uh, you've kind of gotten to know him because you've been spending a lot of money on oysters, which are not easy to farm here. The sweeping sea is very stormy, very turbulent, and the only place that oysters can grow is in the river delta. Um, and I think make, make an investigation check or something. Also, First I question, are all restaurants here restaurants like the city? 
there's some that are more like. Oh no, I closed D and D Beyond. I get it. <laughs> yeah, no, like. <laughs> Took me a second to get there. Restaurants like W R E S S T runs. Yeah. Uh, technically, yes. I guess. Awesome. I just had to make sure. Uh, okay. Where's the dice rolly majig? If I just click it, will it dice? <laughs> Probably. Oh my god, it diced. Is it still bouncing around? Uh, roll the 17, I thought. Is it still for good. anybody else? I don't know. Oh, yeah. There it is. Yep. Okay, so... In here... Um, as you've been, you've been eating here a lot, because it's a very nice restaurant, and you found in your kind of, like, explorations, this place has the best oysters and as you've been like here quite a bit especially the last couple days you've seen the person who brings the shipments of the oysters and it's like a very very young um human person um and they don't look particularly like fancy or professional not that you would necessarily expect that from someone who farms oysters but they look a little like rough and tumble um and i think if you followed them one day you'd be able to find out uh her name is lyra kerrigan she's like 19 she's really young and most of the people that work for her are younger than that is that illegal is there child labor laws in the city of Russ? Uh, probably, but you also think that the people that work for Lyra are people that need taken care of, that don't have anyone else to take care of them. Um, and also, they all seem pretty well, like, you've seen a couple of them scrambling around here and there, and they seem pretty pretty clean, pretty well fed. Um they have a place that they go. There's like a kind of a big house that they go to on the south side. It's a little more rough and tumble on the south side, but um there's like a big house they all go to I'm sorry. and <laughs> and uh you managed to find also that you find where they get their oysters. Um, and you have an inkling that it's probably not on land that they own. Um, it's like the backside of this rocky island that the city sits on. And they're all just like free diving. And like seeding oysters on the walls and pulling them off and no one has caught them yet. And they're good oysters. Mm -hmm. Um... Did I also get anything with my criminal background, or is that the tie into the crime scene? The oyster gate, <laughs> as you will. I think, like, after spending some time there, getting to know Grissom, who owns the place, and kind of like seeing Lyra, you'd be able to get kind of like a like the thing where like you see someone. You know what they're up to, they know what you're up to, and you like you not talk to each other, but you give each other kind of like a what's up, you know? Yeah. Um you could probably build something off of that, you think? Yeah. Um yeah, I'm going to approach Lyra out back one day. I um oh I have like a nice like jasmine amber perfume, but under it you could smell salt and oysters. So many oysters. Y'all y'all have been seeing Wisteria indulge in a lot of oysters. So many oysters. You probably won't want to eat oysters for a long time after watching one of Wisteria's sessions. You know what I mean? So it's just down and up. Yeah, that's probably why Wisteria's on their own on this, because you guys have joined Wisteria. They treated you to a dinner at the Mother of Pearl. 
but you watch them eat like a plate of 100 oysters. And I think that's a little much for most people to bear. At least with the sounds. I'm curious how much <laughs> this is costing. Exactly. Where'd you get the Probably money in this area? Well, Axon definitely did not go to that, but Sploth told him enough that he, he doesn't need to go. <laughs> where am I getting the money from? Oh. Where am I getting the money from? Where do That's we all get money from? <laughs> like, if you think about it, don't we all, like, we all contribute to where money comes from, you know? Like, bees don't have money. Oysters don't have money, especially because I keep eating them. Totally. Also, you know sometimes I sneak the shells and I make you things. Take them. the oysters' money after you eat them. Yeah, like the pearls. It's not so much money for them. We assign value to their suffering, which is really because it's like an irritant that gets stuck inside the oyster. And then they grow, like, protective layers on it, just like we do as people. But do we assign value to other people's suffering? Between this are just, like, slurping sounds, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um, There's lemon, would... like, it's a lemon everywhere, like, minier sauce. Like, little, you know, like, the little cups of it? Like, if you've ever gone in oysters, yeah. like, the cocktail sauce. Yeah. I think, like, did you say you would catch up with Lyra after a certain point? Yeah, I would say, hey, you do good work. Thank you. I've been Who are you? here for a while now. And by a while, I mean, like, a week. Oh, you're the one eating all the oysters. Yeah, they call me the throat goat. I won a competition like three days ago. That name. My, my sash is at uh, where I'm staying, but I just wanted to say, like, you've been doing a good job. Thanks. <laughs> um, so, like, I've also kind of just been exploring the town because I haven't been here much before. Southside's nice. It is. I like it. It's not as pretentious. No, it isn't. I also saw that island, you know, off the back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Starting to, like, pick up on so, like, like, what you're saying. and I like what you're doing. Is there, like, anything that I can do to make sure that, like, you stay in business? She just kind of, like, like, takes a step back away from you a little bit. It's trying to decide if you're being serious or not. Or if you're, like, a cop. One of those, what, like, I, um, would, a would a cop say that they have a throat goat? <laughs> would they? Do you want to roll uh, uh, insight versus me rolling uh, persuasion oh, or deception? Sure. Are you a cop? You legally have to tell me. If you're a bird, you have to tell me. I got a 14. I got a 20. Right. But I am being honest. Yeah. I just wanted to roll dice. Oh, welcome, Raiders. Um... Uh, yeah, I think, like, after a minute, they kind of look at you like, okay, this person's actually serious. Um, and she's like, do you have any inland connections? Because we have some inland connections. But we'd like someone to connect us easier with those connections. Do I have do any we? connections that could connect the connections so that there are more connections? Probably. I I mean, you know people in the village of Tanza, so... Uh, yeah, I like know people in Tanza, if you're interested. I just want to make sure that the product, you know, it gets around. Because it's hard, you know, finding, like, good food around here. Because normally right. I have to eat things like, I don't know, vegetables. Yeah, well, and I mean, we need stuff to go with the seafood we bring in you know what i mean like 
Because not everyone is as big a fan of oysters as you are, you know. Uh, some people want side dishes. Yeah, that's why they're not the throat goats, and I am. Hey, that's fair. And you know, all that lemon has to come from somewhere. Yeah, like, I really don't want to get scurvy despite my mainly mm. seafood diet, so that's why sure. I eat lemons. People tell me I should stop eating, like, the whole peel, too, but, like, skin on or go home, baby, you know? <laughs> That is a very good way to do it, honestly. Just eat the whole lemon and let it go. Right? Yeah, and that that phrase really rolls the tongue. Uh Helps to wash down all the oysters. Right. (laughs) I know. Nothing like a little lemon rind to really wash down the oysters. (laughs) Rockage. Yeah, I could talk to my connections about yours. And, like, I also know this really cool pastry person could ask them for some ideas. They do things with, like, Ooh. what are the things in the ground that kind of look, like, redacted? You mean, like, mushrooms? Yeah, those things. I mean, yeah, anything anything to really spice things up here, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, okay, make well... you feel alive. I'll make sure they use the ones that, like, make you feel alive as opposed to <laughs> A little bit of a lie before you die. <laughs> no, right. but like a little bit. Before like... you die of eating oysters. <laughs> On the mercury in the serious spot you're right now. And Hopefully that's dying. not <laughs> Hopefully that's not the case we, in this we, fantasy we, we world, should, but who should, knows? We should get the uh, tr- uh, uh, apothecary in training to deal with this mercury poisoning. There you go. <laughs> Too bad none of you knows. No, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I think she tells you, like, she's made connections as far out as Rinnekin, but she's not gotten as far as Tanza, so if you can connect her to people in Tanza, um, she would be interested in working with you. So, like, I send you, like, letters, you know? Sure. Because I'll send some letters to my people who will then get back to you. Don't ask me how I know where you live. I know where everybody lives. This hair has secrets. Among other things. I run a hand through my hair and like a lemon seed falls out. (laughs) You asked her? (laughs) Like into the floor. (laughs) Right. Okay. Yeah, just shoot me a letter. A letter. You got it. Cool. And she kind of like, see you later. Walks away. She's like not really sure what happened, but she thinks she has connections to Tanza now. Hopefully. I go back to the hotel we're staying at. Is that the one that um, Alex and his wife are out right now? Yeah. Uh, Splot's upstairs. I think Alexon's probably still at the bar. Are we all in one room, or how is our room situation? Everyone has separate. Except for Splot. Where's Splot staying? With you. Yeah. With Alexon. Aww. Prentice don't get their own room. (laughs) We sleep head to foot, it's fine. I wave to Alexon, and I go, hey... Yeah, and Alexan is just like looking down, like avoiding eye contact with everyone. Hello? Are you like, did you have too much? Do you, can you not perceive me? <laughs> oh, I didn't realize you were here. Oh, so you did. Okay, yeah, so you didn't perceive me. Yeah, I just wanted to say I made it back safely and I was, you know. Doing the usual. You should come to the Mother of Pearl sometime. It's really good. You didn't come to our group dinner. I am allergic to seafood. That sounds horrible. You wouldn't survive where I came from then. Because the cross-contamination issue is not taken seriously. (laughs) It's a food safety hazard for sure. 
a lot of OSHA violations too, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like the oceans, there's so many OSHA violations. I was gonna make that joke too. Thank you, Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> Bart's think alike. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, how are I you think... pairing them? Because like everything here is touched by the sea. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I, I, uh, well, actually, well, actually yep. just kind of like he, he looks up, like he looked up and kind of briefly made eye contact, and now he's just giving this thousand yard stare, like looking off into the distance. Oh my god, are you having an allergic reaction? I'll go get Swan. <laughs> go, I run upstairs. I knock on Swan's door. I think at that point, we'll, uh, away as <laughs> as wisteria bangs on the door and wakes Sloth out of a completely <laughs> solid like he fell asleep so fast um <laughs> the tired let's guy. see who we meet next Sophia oh no it's your <laughs> turn um Vic would, because Vic knows our lovely hotel owner through Claude, <laughs> uh, would probably be hanging out at the hotel, probably giving Laxon some some space, uh, because A, they're talking to someone, uh, Laxon was talking to someone else, and B, also Sploff and yeah. Yeah. They just they, they actually just wanted to seem like wanted to be left alone. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Vic has got some of his favourite tipple, which is you know, mead, and it's just relaxing as you like you do at the bar or at a, at a table, just yeah. observing people watching. Um, as you're kind of people watching. Even though this like southern part of the city is a little more, it's it's less fancy. Um, I think as you're kind of people watching, kind of like this city is very different from where you came from. This whole place is very different from where you came from. But as you're sitting there, you see a little boy run by. His mom is chasing him and just like laughing and. Kind of look familiar almost. Looks similar to some people you know. I hate you. <laughs> it's already session one and now you're piling on the fields. Hey, you know. You gave me your backstory. Yeah, exactly. This it. is my own fault. <laughs> I, I, I say I hate you. I hate myself for giving you this, that information. I, really? Um, Brutal. Yeah. <laughs> but you... And, Got very I mean, gothic. There's lots of... There's lots of different people passing by here, too. Like, you see some more, like, mercenary-looking soldiers, and you think about back home as well, like... But it's a very different place. Like, this is a seaport. You know, there's, there's like, the sound of waves. It's, like, one of the only places in the world where you can hear waves. Because um, it's not like you have tides with no moon. Um, but the storms make the waves here, and... Like, it's, like, this portal, or this, wow, cats on the jazz, this plateau area, this, like, low uh, floodplain is green and vibrant and grows a whole bunch of stuff. You've been working as a farmhand, so you've been learning all about that. Where you're from, it's very dry. There's, like, one tree every quarter mile. Um, and they're huge trees, but... It's like bare earth, kind of pale, these massive trees, like standing all by themselves in the landscape. So it's a very, very different kind of place. It's a very different world, so to speak. Um, at the, at the, yes, hello, Donna, please send me the song of your people. Um, <laughs> Come on, Donna. Cat. 
Donna, the, the people want to see you. The, the, the pe- your, your audience wants wants to see this lovely black cat. Anyway. Um, cat in the background. She's so cute. Yeah, she's it's just beautiful. swishing her tail around and meowing at me. Um, she's communicating to Emily's cat. Yeah. What? Gosh, she's distracting me. Right. Uh, at the sight of, like, the mother and child, Vic kind of dips into his cups a bit more. Um, hopefully Alexa and, well, <laughs> not that Rick's is here, this, but, uh, Alexa and hopefully, uh, Alexa uh, doesn't notice that, but otherwise once that little scene is cleared, Vic is just kind of staring off through the door, kind of look for, you know, seeing what he can see and just kind of not disassociating, but he's, he's definitely daydreaming or just lost in his own thoughts and sometimes you'll see the occasional you know just bring it's almost like robotic or mechanical like um yeah. what? <laughs> all of the goth kids are brooding basically yeah, yeah. Yes. everybody's I'm getting drunk, drunk. Getting <laughs> everybody drunk in the club drunk. getting tipsy yep uh <laughs> uh would alexa have noticed that you can make a perception check. I'd say this point may, with disadvantage because <laughs> how many of these concoctions have you had at this point? Oh man, the first was in that twenty. Ah, uh, let's see. And Vic, you should make a perception check as well since you're kind of people watching and an eight. An eight, probably not. <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh, hi. I think hi, you would it? have seen him sit down at a table kind of far away when you first. Came in with uh, your uh, alchemist fellow. Not alchemist, that's the wrong word. Yeah, Apothecary al- fellow. Al- same thing. Hickle stick. <laughs> I, I, roll, I rolled a 15 on my perception check, by the way. And everyone say, finally, okay. she finally shows her face and her butt. Oh, no. Hi, Kitty. That's a good cat. Oh, she's so cute. Um, I think. Yeah, Alexan, you don't you don't really notice much of anything. You're drinking, Vic's drinking. There's there a, a ba- the there's there's a bar and <laughs> yeah, there there's a ghost in the way. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Vic first. You notice that Pickle Stick leaves, and Vic is still talking to himself. Or Alexan's still talking to himself. Um, I think Vic's talking to him now. Um, I think you also see... As it starts to get darker, there's, like, lights that come up around the city. Um, there's not as many of them on the south side, because this isn't where the rich people live. But there's still lights that come up. Um, they're that same kind of warm yellow color as the stone. So everything looks very, like, yellow and glowy and, um, a lot of people go in before night fully sets in. I think you, since you're, like, kind of familiar with this area, too, um, you've been here for a little while... Uh, you also see a couple of delivery guys walking up to the hotel with a giant wooden chest. Does the chest have any markings on it? Writing, that kind of thing that I can see? Yeah, it is uh, extremely ornately carved. Uh, and as it gets closer, you kind of see what's on it. There's There's fruits and vegetables and grains and mushrooms like all different kind of foods and plant and then there's like flowers in the corners um all carved into this chest um and they kind of take it past you and walk up to the counter inside take it to Vashon who uh, signs a thing for it um and yeah, it it looks like maybe this is the package that you all were waiting for. 
um, when he has a free moment, I'm going to go up to Vashon and be like, hey, up, Vashon. Uh, that, that, hey. that, 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 that the, uh, the package that... Uh, yeah, yeah, for Claude. That, that's the package for Claude. All right. That's it. Yes. Uh, it, uh, if you need to check it over, feel free. Yeah, sounds like a good plan, mate. Uh, you kind of, like, it's not locked. Uh, you open it up, give it a good look over. Um, inside you see, like, on the top, there's, like, a wooden tray along one side with four sections. And each section has a bunch of little packets of seeds of different kinds. They're all, like, written on with different vegetables, fruits, flowers, different things that, um, you know, Claude will want to grow in the next year. Um, there's also... A package in a larger tray at the top that seems to have fancy paper hats for the upcoming settling festival um and they're all folded into a variety of different like organic looking shapes probably enough for the whole village um if you check underneath there is there are several large boxes of candies made with edible flowers um, and there's also a very ornate costume that you know is probably for Claude. He tends to go ham a little bit with these festivals. Um, he's kind of the mayor, but he's a very generous person. He's like the wealthiest landowner in Tanza, and he makes sure everybody has a good time. And he kind of dresses up as some like weird looking plant man. Uh, every year. <laughs> um, and this seems like this year's iteration of that. Um, and at the very bottom of the box is a whole bunch of magical fireworks. Is there anything in that in this crate that would n kind of look out of place for either a farm or for a celebration? Um, I could make an investigation check. I will do my best. <laughs> With the cat on your lap. Yeah. On my arm. Okay. Oh, God. I'm at a minus one. Oh, no. Um, it oh. could ha It's Anything's possible. I rolled a nat 20. Ah! <laughs> so it's a 19. Oh, that's, but... that's great. Um, I would say there's a couple of packets of flowers that seem like you haven't seen him plant them before. Um, they're in a little bit of fancier paper and they have gold writing on the outside instead of like pencil. Um, they're probably something special either for Claude's partner Myrtle or for, um, just for the, for the village. Maybe they do something special. Um, and he wanted to like have a special thing for the village or maybe they're just really pretty and he wanted to grow some uh he keeps bees so maybe it's for a special kind of honey that he wants to make but other than that nothing really weird do I it is very heavy so you might need alexa to help you get it on the cart in the morning yeah even though you're both pretty strong yeah uh i'm for the time being i'm not going to think anything untoward of the uh the gold writing packages that's something to talk to claude about maybe um i'm sure he's got good intentions he's not really a bad person i haven't been his foreman for a good long while and i'm going to um nod to vashon i was good we'll uh we'll load up in the morning and uh Head on back to Tanza. I'll keep it back here for you. You can uh, load it in the morning, yeah? Yeah. Sounds like a plan, mate. Great. In the meantime, uh, if you could uh, furnish me with another mead, that would be grand. You pour you another one. You know that this mead that Vashon has is made with clods, honey. Uh, so it's pretty darn good. Yeah. Um, and Vic would go back and sit again given Alexan space uh probably sees wisteria coming in smelling a fish um smelling the oysters and probably kind of screws kind of goes like this or something as if wisteria goes by 
Um, Close enough to the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> and just <laughs> and just kinda goes back to keeping an eye out for people just in case there's now do well, especially with such a um distinguished package currently behind the bar. <laughs> sure, sure. All right. Uh as you kind of get ready to take in another flagon of mead. Uh, we're gonna see who's next. Kayla! Knew it. <laughs> what is Chestnut up to on this day? You've been here for a week. Uh, are we reintroducing our characters too? Yeah, go for it. I keep forgetting to have everybody describe... That's Luckily, okay. there's artwork there uh, to help me. You're like, you're like, hey, Rick, can you describe your character? Everyone else, you're good. Nope, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> yep. you know, let's use your imagination, though. No. Yeah, use the art as your imagination. That's right. Um, no, Chestnut is a shifter bard. So she's like slightly animalistic, but mostly human. Um, she has bright rainbow long hair that she wears pulled back in a little ponytail. She wears like a purple dress and like a little leather corset as her armor. Um, and she's just really bubbly rainbow kid to counteract all of the goths. She's a bard. Um, and so Chestnut is basically from Rest. So she's really familiar with the area. Um, she went to college here and has kind of stayed here more or less since graduating from school. Yeah. Um, and so I think she would be, one, spending her time busking, you know, mm. just up on some of the more popular corners, just making a little bit of extra money because um, she knows, like, kind of the best places to busk for tourists and stuff. And also I think she'd go back to, like, the little, like, sublet, the little flat that she rents. And, you know, like, check her mail, like, water the plants, just kind of, like, check in with stuff, see if she got any postcards from her dad. Uh, she does have two parts postcards from her dad, oh, cool. actually. Oh. Um, yeah, the first one, um, you can tell they came, like, not too far apart. Um, the first one is uh, a postcard that has an image on the front It says, uh, Aether Pass, and it, there's like a ridge of mountains going up the center in the distance, and it's flanked by forests on either side. Um, that one, it tells of a little town just north of this pass that your dad went to in the mountains, and they uh, just found some sort of hidden temple under a tavern because a bunch of dwarvish miners were celebrating too hard and busted through the floor. <laughs> Um, and he is just seems, like, very tickled by the whole thing. It's, like, super funny to him. Um, <laughs> the second one, uh, shows a seaport town on an island with a notation over the image that says Fyrg Kruthik Isles. And, uh, speaks, because, you know, it's only a postcard, but, uh, speaks briefly about this fantastic series of islands off the east coast of Mirthed, and how wild and wonderful it is that they're very efficiently run by a bunch of very skilled pirates and scavengers. Interesting. Hmm. Um, and I think you being a lore bard, especially, um, you would know that Mirthed, so the sweeping sea, the waves kind of sweep in a consistent direction so they kind of go across where where rest is and they all crash on near that <laughs> where um and that seems to be where he is now okay it's like where all of the waves end yep uh they have like a big seawall there to try and protect themselves Bad place by the time they get the there it's like <laughs> massive so. <laughs> cool well, I would add them to my pile. I'd probably have like a little shoe box or something. Yeah. The ones yeah. that he sent me. So I throw them in the pile, water the plants a little bit, um, pay my, my rent for the week that I'll be there. Yeah. 
and uh, then probably go see if everybody is at the is it the uh, the bleached ball? bone. Bleached bone. Yeah. And it was one a white great. building in a sea of yellow stone. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, I would say you probably walk in just as this massive chest is being delivered. Um, oh, perfect. Uh, you see these <laughs> two of your companions off drinking in the bar. Uh, one of them is talking to themselves. Uh, one is kind of staring into the distance. <laughs> um, and you probably hear Wisteria upstairs banging on the door for Splouth yelling that Alaxon is having an allergic reaction and it doesn't so. look like he is, but <laughs> who knows? You're not sure what happened. Yeah, that seems pretty par for the course. Yeah. Um, question first, though. Do you think I would have been able to make some money busking this week? Uh, yes, I'll say um, roll a performance check with advantage because you've been doing it for the whole week. Um, okay. And if you don't get two nat ones, you'll make something. <laughs> Okay, uh, 22 and 22 is the best one. Nice. Okay, let's see. Mm, 95 gold. Ooh. Gold really high. Oh, well, yeah. Thank you. Cool. Make some good money. You've probably been set up in the marketplace. Yeah. And also, um, Chestnut's super excited for the festival. Yeah. She's been to some before, and it's, like, a huge deal here in Rest. Yeah. Um, and it's also a really good opportunity to, like, perform and meet people and, like, do all kinds of fun things. So she's, like, really jazzed to, to go. Yeah, you would know, like, especially in Rest, because it's such a huge city, when they do the festival, they take, like, a whole other Delta Island and set up, like, a... Um, there's, like, a athletic competition, basically, that kind of um reenacts the collapse of the plateau and people have contests where they try to like climb up it um and so there's like a flat part where they run through mud and then they have to like climb over some scrambly bits and then climb a completely vertical wall at the very end <laughs> i think uh Alaxon was familiar with this particularly large version of the festival. He might be upset by that, but you don't know. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's like there's like competitions all day. It's like a basically a full day picnic where people eat and drink and play games and they're just outdoors all day. Um, there's like sweet treats and usually fireworks at the very end. So fun. I can't wait. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I think like getting ready for it too. It's not necessarily because it's, it's a bit of a remembrance. There's like a, a somber bit to it, but there's also, um, it's a lot of, it's basically like a harvest celebration. Uh, this is the end of the wet season. So there's a lot of crops. There's a lot of, plentiful food even on the top of the plateau they celebrate it as well um and but especially down here where it's like you can grow anything they really make a whole day of it it's a huge big thing and if you also take a look at what's in that chest you know that even though the celebration in tanzel will be a lot smaller it will probably also be a good time <laughs> cool uh, you you haven't known this Claude guy for very long, but it seems like he knows how to do it. Yeah, I think so. Um, I'll actually tell him, I love your costume. That's looking so good. Did you oh, make thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for, uh, for our, you know, our celebration. Um, oh, got yeah, some plans. Too. I got some plans. So I, I should get a new outfit. That's a really good idea, actually. Yeah, you should. Maybe I'll go shopping tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Yeah. He, like, 
just sets like 10 gold on the counter because he's a very generous man and <laughs> he wants oh. you to get a nice outfit. He's, he you can tell that. you're excited. Oh. It's a lot of money. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> He's also very rich. <clears throat> All right, and I think with that, let's see what Lucy is up to. Our final, okay. final party member. So Lucy's headed into town to get a tattoo. Um, it's her second <laughs> sitting. Uh, she's getting a. They're getting a. Um, a ring around the their upper arm that looks like the catacombs in Paris. Basically, it's like all femurs and skulls. <laughs> and uh, they're having a drink while they're doing that because you know why not? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think like the person you found to do this is like you probably met them at the Goth Club. Mm-hmm. Uh, the probably. or the Lost Dungeon. I think I said it was called. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's like literally a prison that's been abandoned and they turned it into a club. Uh, nice. And uh, he's like this really uh, tough guy, you know, but he's like real nice and uh, he's going to do this tattoo for you for a discount for sure. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Have you, I heard that there are uh, magical tattoos. Do you know where I could get something like that at some point? Yeah, I mean, the, hmm. there are for sure. They're real like, hard to do. Yes, that's what I thought. But uh, it sounds so cool. You could probably see if any of the, like, more rebellious bard kids up at the college could do one. I know some rebellious belt kids, but I don't think they tattoo. <laughs> uh, you should ask them. You never know. You never know. Anything is possible. They I, may not. I'll, I'll see. They might. They might. They might. But those would probably um, be the people that have enough skill to do a thing like that. Possiblement. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, is there anything interesting happening in town right now that you've heard of? Oh, I mean, everybody's getting ready for this festival. You know, uh, there's some good shows going to be happening down on the south side. That's where all the interesting stuff is, really. In my humble opinion, uh, the muckety mucks keeping their towers up north, you know. I get it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anything else? Good gossip. Uh, anything I should know oh. happening? Awesome. <laughs> hmm. Well, you want to make a persuasion check? <laughs> sure. Okay, one second here. Let me check what my persuasion is. <laughs> uh oh. Okay, where where do I find this on here? Um. Oh, oh I found it. Alphabetical okay, so order should be down a little farther. Yeah. Plus four. Okay. Um, one second here. Can I just roll real dice? Because I also don't know sure. where to find the dice on D&D Beyond. Okay, so 11 plus four is a 15. Sweet. Um, kind of like leans and he goes, but some of the folks in less legal circles in this city kind of looking to branch out into the uh, more rural areas since that's where all the money gets made. You know what I mean? They grow and all the stuff. So what, what, think, are, what are they growing over there? I mean, all sorts of stuff, really. They can grow just about anything, but... I love plants. It's a, it's a passion of mine. Do tell. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, there's like... There's all the basic food stuff, you know. But sometimes the stuff around, like, supposedly, the Immortal Canyon is blessed. So, like, that's why we can grow all the stuff. But really, I think it's just because we get all the rain. You know what I mean? Perhaps, yes. It might be yeah. magic. You never know. You never yeah. know. Okay. Yeah, I guess so. Everything's yeah. a little bit magic, right? It sure is. That's what I've held anyway. 
Um, and any shows you recommend uh, in the south side there? Uh, there's supposed to be a real uh, wild rave happening. Uh, oh, gosh. That is exactly like what I'm looking for. Docks. And my fan, too. She's, she's looking for this, docks. I think. It was like an outdoor <laughs> rave at the dock. Sweet. But like at Excellent. nighttime after everything is closed <laughs> down, you know what I mean? Oh, yes. Just cut uh, that clip of the goth kids. Dancing <laughs> everything. <laughs> Okay, that is cool. It was like tomorrow night, I think. This tattoo looks pretty sick. I like it a lot. Thank you. Yeah, it, it looks pretty good. Like, for the whatever discount shady backroom dealings, uh, this guy's pretty stinking talented. It looks exactly how you wanted it. The like, shading okay. is extra, like, cool. Um, maybe he put a few mushrooms in there for you. <laughs> in, like, some eye sockets. As you something. do. <laughs> Yeah, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, ben, thank you so much. And uh, she pays him. They pay them and yeah. take off. Head back yeah. towards the inn. Just looking down all the alleyways, checking out what's happening in the city, seeing if there's anything interesting while they go. Yeah, I mean, you probably, like, catch a couple of... Uh secret trysts or backroom deals um, as you're going. <laughs> um, Excellent. And I think at some point you kind of feel like the farther south you get, the more you can feel that there's like more mushrooms, moss, lichen, fungus in this area than mm -hmm. there is like in the... if. You've been here for a week. Everybody's done a little wandering around. Mm -hmm. um, this part has like a definitive network of. Great. Right. You can kind of feel it. Okay. I go looking around to see if I can find anything interesting to take samples from. Okay. Make an investigation check or a nature check, I'd say. Okay. One second. They're both plus three. Okay. No, I'm going to re-roll that because that kind of got stuck on the edge of my rolling mat between a 20 and an eight. Settled on a 20, but I don't feel like that. Oh, it's a five. <laughs> no mushrooms are found. Um, I mean, you find some. There's some, like, interesting kind of seafoam colored lichen on the side of a building. And then you find some more of the same stuff and... Right. It's more of the same stuff. It seems very prevalent around here. I, yeah, I, I just leave it there as well. <laughs> uh, you do notice when you get to the Bleached Bone, that building is pristine. There is no lichen on it. There is nothing growing on that building. It is white. And it is rectangular. Okay. It's like the Museum of Mod like the Modern Art Wing at the uh, Art Institute of Chicago. Just like a big white like... box. Nice. Yeah. Okay. I head into the bleach bone, shaking my head about the lack of mushrooms. <laughs> At that point, you definitely, I think you're like coming in right as everything is like coming to a head. There's, you know, you've got Alaxon at the bar drinking some weird concoction that you've never seen before this is not a mixed drink you've ever heard of this is not familiar in any way it looks wild and he's just <laughs> chugging it down and talking to no one um and there's a uh, vic in the corner staring into space probably drinking mead at this point you would know that that's like vic's drink of choice um there's uh you hear a hysteria upstairs pounding on the door and splash coming up going, what happened? What happened? Um, and Chestnut's like kind of looking through the, the package that's been delivered and yeah, gang's all here at this point. Okay. Where's his epi wand? <laughs> what is, what, I don't know what you're talking about. With it's Syria. okay. I have lesser restoration, I think. 
hearing like, sloth coming oh, downstairs. What happened? He goes like running down. He's like half falling down the stairs because he's <laughs> a little bit clumsy. Yeah, and as he's like running up towards me, I've got my hand out and he just runs straight into it, like <laughs> face first, <laughs> falls down, flat, <laughs> just like flat on his back. Like... <laughs> sloth, why are you out of bed? What happened? You're having an allergic reaction. I got your, uh, what do you call him? You're like, what? What did I eat? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not you, hey. Your boss, man, dude. What did he eat? I don't know. I think he's come in contact with shellfish because as we've established, I've been eating like 100 oysters a day. <laughs> I, at this point, am at least 1% oyster. So what happened? Your <laughs> no! You just, like, I don't think so! Get, oh my god, I think Vic is having one too! <laughs> Look at them! At this point, Alaxon's getting, like, overwhelmed by so many people perceiving him and, you know, trying to interact with him. This, this... And he's just gonna, like, get up, not say anything, and just walk right out. Does... Outside or to he's, your room? he's gonna walk outside and then he's gonna keep walking. Oh, okay. Which direction do you want to roll for? Sure. What I am I Chesna, rolling? Chesna would follow him if she notices that he just leaves like that. Do like a D8. Yeah, because Chestnut knows the city at least, so <laughs> <laughs> don't get lost. Uh, I got a one. Okay. You just start walking straight <laughs> north. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just yeah, like chestnut. Like tries walking. to keep up with them. Hey, where are you going? Oh, uh, I just needed some air. Fine. Um, you know, don't go too far north. You might get lost. I'm sure I'll be fine. What? What's? What's north? What's north? Uh, you would basically run straight into the marketplace. And, you know, they're probably setting up for the festival, and it's probably just, like, super chaotic, so... You know, just yeah. don't go too far. I just want to make sure hearing, you're okay. Hearing the mention of the festival, you definitely would notice he, he slowed down quite a bit. I was like, oh. You know, maybe maybe this isn't... Maybe I shouldn't go this way. After A little all. much in there, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, you could say that. I could play you a song if you want. I... Sure, I suppose. See, I think I have Song of Rest. Which might be nice. Play him a regular song. I pull up my, um... Ooh, what's it called? My Yarting. My little hand guitar. Um, and just like a soft little like plucking melody, you know, something like gentle, it's soothing, kind of hopefully. Chill. Yeah. I think um, even though like the most relaxed that you felt, Alexa, in the past however long um, was probably in the, like, void that you were in. I was gonna at, say. <laughs> um, because you weren't stuck anywhere. You were just kind of floating. There were these sort of, like, pinpricks of light all around you. Um, and even though there was no, like, music there or anything, you always felt very comfortable. It, there was, like, a warm presence about that place. You don't know what it was or where it was or who right. that might have been. You never saw anybody there, but um, it was never uncomfortable. Well, thank you. That was that was actually pretty nice. I'm glad you like it. Um, you know, you stay out here and take as long as you need to relax, but uh, just, you know, be aware if you go too far north, you'll hit the festival and that might be worse. So I'll see you inside. Thank you. And he's just going to linger outside. And yeah, brood. I would have inside already. For sure. 
Uh, there are stars out, and you can see the planetary rings now, uh, mm. very clearly. They kind of glow. They're a little bit like silvery and lavender, and a little bit of blue in there. They're pretty. Sounds beautiful. But it's pretty normal. Pretty normal sight. Sounds romantic. <laughs> <laughs> Not <I'm> even inside. <laughs> That's what I write. Don't, don't, don't say the R word. What happened last last week? Last week. Yeah, last week. Uh, Everyone's shipping us. It's gonna, next next thing you know, Em's gonna have us freaking I know. doing a romance subplot <laughs> <laughs> under the uh, under the rings of Ben Car. Twinkling stuff. <laughs> Sounds pretty nice. I'm not gonna lie. It's, it is pretty, uh, especially like you know this place that you're at is down in the middle of a canyon, so like far off in the distance you see just like cliffs and there's the ocean with the waves. The waves don't crash up anywhere, they just kind of go by. And there's lots of stars. And I think maybe at that point, because it's yeah. like 10, 15, we could take a break. Sweet. Sweet. Now everybody's Sweet. introduced. Everybody's <laughs> The package has been delivered. <laughs> we can have a moment. We'll be back. I think we're back. Yes, we are. <laughs> All being well. Welcome okay. back, assuming, buddy. assuming I haven't screwed up. I don't think I have. <laughs> Can we all be heard? That's an important question to ask. I hope so. Can you hear us? Do -do -do -do. <laughs> I take that as a yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So Welcome back, nerds. <laughs> Um, okay. Um, welcome back from break. As a reminder, we're raising money for the Trevor Project all this month, so give it to them. Give them money. Okay. And <laughs> give them money. <laughs> um, <laughs> link Kayla, is in I just the love chat. that I, Kayla, I love that I couldn't hear you, but I could tell exactly what you were saying. <laughs> give them money. Money. It's important to enunciate when you are asking people to donate. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Um, Affy Artemis, whoever you are. Uh, both, maybe. Who knows? Affamous. Affamous. Ooh. Mm. It's like a celebrity couple name. Nicely yeah. done, Sophia. I mean, I, I said it in chat earlier, but that's fine. Did you? <laughs> I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't either, Rick. <laughs> it was way earlier. Ah. Yeah, all credit to, to Rick. <laughs> it's still a celebrity couple name and it's perfect. Yeah. Um okay. So eventually you all either fall asleep at the bar or <laughs> fall asleep in a bed. Um and get ready. An A for bed. <laughs> a bed. <laughs> I don't want to you know, make assumptions. Um, maybe you prefer sleeping on the ground. I don't know. I don't know your life. Uh, <laughs> Passes out in doorway. Yeah. You need to sleep in the in-between spaces. No. Uh, Liminal. <laughs> sleep in the void. <laughs> Been there. Yeah, it must be nice. Face down in a pool of water. <laughs> Some people uh, can sleep in their dead. Only one of the that only applies to one of us. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Spoilers. I don't know who that would be. Mm. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> <laughs> no surprises <laughs> there. <laughs> Secretly, the rainbow is actually the darkest of them all. <laughs> I'm all the colors. <laughs> 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 you wake up the next morning. It's another lovely, bright, cloudless day. Nice and warm. Uh, the waves are doing what they do. The city is doing what it does. Um, 
and you have your package that you can take back to Tanza. Um, I'd say it's pretty easy to get it loaded up, get it on uh, the cart that you have, and head on your way. And as you're several hours into the trip, but you're not to Tanza yet, there it starts to sprinkle because, you know, it's the rainy season. Uh, and then it starts to rain a little heavier and rain a little heavier and pretty soon it's pouring. It is pouring rain. You have a cart, but it's not like fancy. Um, and you would know that you're coming up on the village of Rinnekin, which is just before uh, Tanza. Uh, what does Flock do? Place with hurtful right? things. <laughs> Go ahead, Maggie. I would say, does Flock like the rain? He does. He does like the rain. He doesn't seem bothered, although when it gets pretty heavy, it kind of gets in his eyes. And he's not as good at watching the road. Does he not have like those those like secondary eyelids, like crocodiles? Oh, no, he probably does. The what are they called? I forget. Yeah. I used to know this. Other eyelids. Like uh, answers on a postcard. Uh, no, Afi and I were talking about it a few days ago. I can find it. Keep going, y'all. <laughs> Nictitating uh, membranes. Thank yes, you, yes, yes. Aphimus. Uh. <laughs> I'm just going to use that now. It's so good. It um, so yeah, he probably could kind of see, but it'd be maybe a little cloudy. I don't know. I think it's always a little cloudy for him. <laughs> He's a little cloudy always anyway. It's always He's cloudy actually... in his lost mind. Yeah. yeah. He's actually we're... nearsighted, but you know. Well. That just makes the ride extra interesting if he's steering. <laughs> oh, he's not. He's not allowed. Oh, good. We. Uh, but it. it's, it's pouring rain. Renekin's close, or you could push on to Tanza. It's up to you. Uh, no, I would probably stop at Renekin. Okay. Some people in Renekin. Yeah, you would know some. Um, well, it's probably been a. Crash. Probably been a while since you've been there because your parents haven't been there in a while. But um, you you do know people there. You know people in the village, so yeah. Um, it wouldn't be too difficult to find a place to stay um, with some old family friends or something. If it's not um, late, I could uh, try and perform somewhere and get a place to stay with my entertainer background feature. That's true, too. Uh, I would let you do that. Negotiate, like, a barn? Yeah. Over yeah. or something? Okay. There's, um, there's a stable that's kind of attached to the local kind of brew pub. Okay. It Yeah. I mean, this probably only applies to me, so I guess you could interpret this how you want, but I technically receive free lodging and food of a modest or comfortable standard. Mm -hmm. So maybe it wouldn't be quite as nice with the whole group, but... Yeah, but I think... Uh, if you made a persuasion check... And since you are from here, I would give you advantage. Okay. Can I give you bardic inspiration? Give the bard bardic inspiration yeah, on you, your best you bard skill? Inspiration. Bards <laughs> inspiring each other. I'm so much trouble. Sorry, you said persuasion? Yeah. Okay. Um, ooh, that's good. 22 again. Nice. Uh, yeah, without too much trouble, you would be able to convince someone to make space for the whole crew, including... Nice. It's easy Blouse. to say to me. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, and when they see the rest of the group pile out of the way, and they're like, oh, gosh. Okay, <laughs> yeah, we trust you. You're from here. It's okay. Um, I am... As you pull into Rinnekin and start kind of piling out, finding a place to lay down, I would like everyone to make an insight check. 19. 19. 
17. Same. Uh, one second. Hold on. It's a 15 for me. That's almost cool, Sophia. I I have 17 plus 7. Does that make sense? Even? My insight insight has plus 7, and I just rolled a 17, so... Yeah. I either totally rock that, or I'm lying right now. I don't know. I think that's true. I mean, my persuasion and like charisma skills are plus seven because I'm proficient. Okay. Yep. So math twenty four right. then I guess. Gosh, you all rolled pretty high. <laughs> so it wouldn't be difficult to tell that you've all spent some amount of time in kind of the rural areas of this nation to some degree. Um most of these small villages that are like small farming villages are very similar. Um, there's like someone who owns a lot of land and they're kind of the benefactor for the rest of the town that kind of grows up around their farm. Things like that. Um, and everyone else has their own little plots of land. Maybe some people have like specializations, but in general, that's how these towns usually work. And I'll say... Um, Especially Chestnut would notice, first of all, that the family that is usually running this town, you don't see them anywhere. And I mean, you don't see a lot of people out in general because it's pouring down rain. But like, even once you go into this like brew pub, you don't see some of the usual people inside. What time is it? And um, it's maybe late afternoon. It's not like fully the end of the day. Okay. But it's, it's late enough that it got very dark when the storm rolled in. Um, I shouldn't read the chat while I'm trying (laughs) to make stuff up in my head. (laughs) Because then it makes me laugh and I lose track of my uh, Never done that before. I have no idea. Yeah, first time that's happened on the screen. <laughs> right? Now I'm just picturing a bunch of goth kids in one of those gastro pubs <laughs> with like the tiny food, and it's like this cheese and fruit goes with this beer. It's an IPA. <laughs> it's like okay. anyway, Chestnut's kind of place. Yeah. Whereas Alexa's is just like, I- I'm gonna need more than this. <laughs> I need hard liquor. Um, <laughs> the darkest corner in here. Right. Um, I would say, like, yeah, Chestnut in particular, you don't see, like, any members of the family that runs the, like, largest farm in this town. And they have, like, it's like a couple that has several kids um, that are also almost grown they so there's they're a relatively big family you usually see one of them around you don't see any of them um and also i would say um because lucretia rolled extremely high um you would notice that kind of as you like roll into town there's a group of people outside the like big house at the end of the street um they seem they're kind of their body language is a little bit like they're watching you mm-hmm. and i'd say not too long after maybe 20 30 minutes after you all get settled and get some food a few people roll into this tavern um there's let me see here. There's um, a kind of tall, thin, older half elf. And then you see an Earth Genasi woman that's like real stocky. And wearing kind of a different kind of armor than you than you're used to seeing, and there's some sort of like very beautiful, like 
almost this person has almost like a glow about them, but they're wearing kind of a, a mask over their face. Um, but their skin is like iridescent. Um, and they come in and they just kind of sit at a table and they're not even really hiding it. They're just kind of watching your group. Uh, Vic, the Earth Genasi person, the Earth Genasi woman, looks familiar. You fought with her in your home like 20 years ago. With or against? With. Okay. And you kind of, I think you would kind of see that she like clocks you and kind of looks at you curiously. She definitely didn't expect to see you here. And if anyone is close, if anyone is close to Vic when he clocks this Earth Genasi woman, you can hear him mutter under his breath, oh, bollocks. Oh. No, her. She looks tough. So, like. Go on, go on, go on, Maggie. No, he, he, she, uh, uh, Wisteria's like, so Oh, Wisteria, yeah, like... Wisteria's real bad. Wisteria just like, huh? Um... What's going on? Why, like, why is everybody so tense? <laughs> Did you roll poorly? I rolled a four. Oh, okay, sure. She seems like a nice town. It's raining a lot. Yeah, like, are you upset that there's a lack of seafood? Because, like, it's probably a good thing, because one of our party members might die or something. I don't know. I don't know how allergies work. I didn't go to school for allergies. Alaxon, in his dark corner, just, like, puts his hood up and is, like, hunkering down, trying to pretend like he's not there. I feel like, Emily, you have, like, a lot of allergies. Imagine having to deal with wisteria. Caring about your allergies, but not understanding. Yeah. Um, I get it. You do have a lot of allergies. Vic is definitely yeah. going to give this Earth Genasi lass a, a look to know that she's been clocked as well. But not say anything or make any attempts to just go up and speak to her. Just not to arouse suspicion with the others right now, just in case. Hmm. Especially with other people being tense and all. Sure. I'm not tense. I'm fine. <laughs> Chestnut's never tense. You're not, you're not, to, That's not, you're not tense, Lars. <laughs> they are. Oh. Why don't you go play for them um. or something? idea wisteria why don't you come with me sure you guys like do you want to dance this time or do you want to like sing maybe uh or i can sing if you can want play. yeah whatever yeah i can i can sing let's go i definitely lubed up my throat over the last week <laughs> <laughs> shucking oysters right down there oh god <laughs> I'm a lemon. <laughs> oh. are good for the voice. Normally you do honey, not oysters, but I've always been a little bit quirky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, but but Maggie, I have to ask, is it a bowl full of lube? <laughs> <laughs> the Fixie is five staple. <laughs> That's the one that always stands out whenever they do the, uh, the uh, highlights on break. <laughs> I don't think that I was there for that one, and I'm not okay with that. That when Jason was talking about the bathroom stuff. I mean, love that. <laughs> I saw somebody they have like a snail-shaped soap dispenser, but they filled it with lube. Oh. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I have that soap dispenser. It's not filled with lube, though. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> you say warm. debatable. I'm going to. Um, have you both roll performance? Okay. I'm gonna have you 
Can we bardic inspire ourselves or each other? <laughs> yeah. I guess so. Okay. <laughs> sure. How do we I'm add eating off each other? I'm going to say roll performance. Okay. You're going to roll two dice. You're going to take the number that is farthest away from 10. Okay. Oh, that's a nat 20. <laughs> well, okay. And I that's rolled a good number. I rolled a 20 and then I rolled a 1. So <laughs> I'm about as far away as I can. You're doing great, y'all. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> How do we use the bardic inspiration? That's what I do. You know, I work in extremes here. <laughs> Our. Our bodic inspiration's a D6 each, right? Yeah. yeah. I guess I'll do that and add it to my one. Well, I mean, let's see. They're both equally far They're away. They're both equally distant. Yeah. That's what I was afraid would happen. <laughs> it's a four, oh. by the way. Who, know that, who knew that math would do this to us? Well, Fucking math. I mean, we too gay to math. Yeah, we're too gay to math. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know, they're like equal. We're just we're just we're pretty just... We don't do math. But yeah, four, I mean I think technically because we don't have a zero on the die, the twenty is actually farther away from ten. Just just go with it. Just well, whatever. I'm like trying to count it out in my head. <laughs> hey, just, just a reminder you can sign up with us at voc, tinyyearall.com slash voc especially if you are good at math mm. you yeah, don't take one it's like one farther away it's it's a full 10 and one is only 9 away from 10 so the 20 takes takes it what did you get Maggie I had uh, I think a 9 and a 12 oh. okay so the 12 plus whatever Performance. It's a thing that Brennan Lee Mulligan did, and I tried it, and you know what happened? We got a 20 and a 1. That's what happened. Thanks, so, Brennan, Brennan thanks. thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> thanks for your idea. Also, we almost, you almost ruined our game. And then no, bring Lizzo. Just... Yes. Brennan and Lizzo, please come play D&D &D with us. Because we know that they oh play D&D &D together. <laughs> for sure. All the time. It's okay. Ryan will probably run into them randomly. It's yeah. fine. I did Thank see you, that he's going to be playing on unprepared casters, so it's not out of the realm of possibility. There you go. Um, <laughs> Brennan Lee Mulligan, come play with us. Also, anyone else? Um, okay. So you both the the role for emphasis. Uh went very well in your favor. Um, and as you're performing, the three people sitting at the table that are just staring at you seem to relax a little bit. Um, you see them kind of like murmuring amongst each other at the table. And at some point, uh, the Earth Genasi woman gets up and walks over to the table and says, Hey, Vic. Didn't expect to see you here. I didn't expect to see you here either. Yeah, well, lots of opportunities in this place. Yeah, you're telling me. Yeah. Um, during this, Wisteria starts to play a sens starts to sing like a sensual song, like yeah, it was um. <laughs> but on the panpipes, because I can Lady play. <laughs> <laughs> um yes, that's the lady just kind of like sits at the table um you would know her name is uh um, uh, ba, 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 I don't remember Graft her name is Graft um and her skin is like really kind of like iron red packed dirt almost um and she looks just always kind of dusty uh, her eyes are 
brown and she's got like really short brown hair kind of like it looks slicked back but it almost like it's rock also um so it's just kind of formed that way and um kind of cocky like you remember her she was younger than you 20 years ago when you fought together she was cocky then um and a little bit reckless and headstrong and very willing to do whatever needed to be done so what uh what job you got around here lately I haven't seen you in the vicinity before uh, I work over an old Claude's farm as a foreman you know, keeping an eye on the crops, keeping the farm man's in line. The usual kind of things a foreman does over in Tanza. Were you keeping those farm hands in line though, or was it Sploth? <laughs> little column A, little column B. Um She just kind of like glares at you like she's trying to figure out if you're telling the truth because she's very obviously wearing like her old beaten up armor from home you would imagine that her line of work is a little different from yours mm -hmm. probably not farming out here he is telling the truth yeah obviously but if you want if he wants to she can believe whatever she wants to believe in, yeah. in the words yeah. of uh, Morpheus. Um, yeah. What you think? I'm you think I'm lying? Look, not all of us stayed in the trade after you know everything that happened over in the companies. Some of us uh, want a bit more of a peaceful life, and I ain't getting any younger. So I uh -huh. took something a bit. <clears throat> Something a bit more easy in the old years. And, uh, well, Claude treats me well. So, yeah. No, uh, no sense in, uh, wasting a good opportunity. You get me? No. Sure. You don't know if he's interested in selling, selling any of his land, do you? Don't think so. I mean, mm. it just got all. I mean, it's the festival and everything. We'll be planting soon, I, I suspect. So uh, I doubt yeah, it. Sure. But you'd have to, you know, someone would have to talk to him directly about it. Well, you know, we've tried. You tried well, he just him? doesn't seem receptive, perhaps. Maybe you could convince him. I mean, I can have a word with him if you like. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you should, you know. Yeah, I could do that. Because there's lots of people looking to buy up land these days. Especially out in the crook of the river where he is. Could be good for him. He's getting older. Perhaps he ought to retire. Can I make an insight check to see whether I'm being threatened? Slash Claude is being threatened. Yeah, go for it. Just to keep things above board. That's a 14. Um, you're definitely being threatened. Yeah. The sax okay. saxophone song plays in the background while you're being threatened. <laughs> <laughs> Can you play pull that off on the panpipe, you think? Uh, I might have to switch to the bagpipes, actually. I'm also proficient in those. <laughs> Sexy bagpipes, song. <laughs> Sexy bagpipes. Girl, Girl, bagpipes. Her. Nothing like a little wind <laughs> in the air to really set the tone. Um, I think also, like, Lucretia and uh, Alaxon, you're both still sitting at the table. This woman is not even looking at you. I mean, I'm I'm definitely, like, Alaxon sat at a different table intentionally. Oh, okay. But I can probably see it. Yeah. But I think uh, I think Alexa's kind of just focused on She's doing on that her. thing where she's like leaning back on her chair like this. Yeah. 
just kind of like Lucretia gives her a hard stare. Well, anyway, good to see you. Yeah, Stay you healthy. Too. Yeah, you too. And she like walks back over. The two others stand up and leave with her. Y'all right, Vic? How's the weather out there? Raining still. Bollocks. I think we're stuck here. We have a problem. So you knew her uh, from before? Yeah. Hmm. We have a bit of history together. Um, yes, it, it was apparent. You you definitely get the, the 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 impression that Vic's reticent to talk about that that history, um, outside of what he's already said to was it Grift or Graft, Emily? Uh, Graft. Graft. Okay. Well, so what he says to Graft, he already said to Graft. Um, I think old Graft's I think old Graft's fallen into a bit of a bad line of work. Yeah, I think you're right. Very dangerous, I suspect. I definitely... It's, it's a bit weird. But I definitely got the sense I was being threatened. If it weren't ju and it weren't just me, it was... Uh, You're not wrong. And uh, it was uh, not just me, it's Claude as well. Okay. Yes. Do we need to send Welp to Claude so he knows? I... I'm a two minds about that. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I'll tell, let, me, uh, let me explain why. First, first Okay, is, tell me. If they, if they intercept a messenger, or however we manage to do it, unless any of you can, you know, use the old brain powers to, to send messages to people. Um... If they intercept a messenger with a written message, they'll warning him that something's going to happen. Well, they'll know I've written talk, and next thing you know, we're the ones who are going to start getting beaten up on. But at the same yeah. time, if we don't warn him, and they move out now, even in even in this shite weather, then. Uh, we're not going to be there to keep an eye on him, especially not me. Um, bollocks. So hear, hearing this, I think Alaxon is like silently gesturing to Sploth and uh, has him go get the horse and says, go now. Okay. And you explain to him what to, what to do and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I think right, I write it down twice. I give one <laughs> to him, like put it in his hand. And then I yeah. secretly tuck the other in his pocket. Okay. <laughs> Just in case. Smart. It doesn't take much. Thank you, Pastor. The backup note. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, I mean, Sloth's pretty comfortable in the rain. Of all the things that he's bad at, this might be the perfect situation for him. Uh, the horse is not going to like it, but... Wait, I'm what like, you call this the perfect storm? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, the, the horse is fine. She doesn't like sloth, yeah. but tolerates him. <laughs> um, and I think was actually like, get on it. Uh, and he like dashes out. You hear the horse riding away. You don't hear any other sounds going after it. Seems like he's fine. Okay. Yeah, and once I'm pretty confident, I'm just like, Vic, would you keep it down? I am being quiet. Oh. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of did that as you guys were talking. Like I was half listening and then like also directing spots at the same time. So like as you're kind of wrapping up your story, I'm just like, would you, would you keep it down? They're playing. Oh, Sploth's gonna miss the performance of Vic, a lot. Vic looks between oh, Vic, again. Vic, Vic looks between Alexa and then and, and then Chestnut and Syria and back and forth. It's like, oh yeah. Good point. While well, the others are all used at the 
those three already left anyway. So, eh. Compared to the other night, this performance is epic. They make a good <laughs> pair. <laughs> and and then after that, you just see kind of Vic put a knuckle in his mouth, and he's just like, mm. he's thinking. Then from the distance, you hear Alfie shout, "Stop chewing on your fingers!" <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Artemis. I'm Vic. Dang it. <laughs> Call yeah, her out. Um, Your nose bleeds. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Look at the sky. Where did that voice come from? Uh, does Wisteria, as they are singing their very heart out, do they see any of their criminal contacts because they were supposed to set up a line of oysters and vegetables and maybe uh, mushrooms? Um, I think... Just make a straight intelligence check. I am obviously extremely intelligent. And if you didn't use the bardic inspiration before, you would still have I, it. I did use it earlier. Um, I rolled a nine. Do I see them? No. No. I'll say no. Mm. But you also know that Lyra was looking to get more into Tanza because they already had connections in Riddiken. Mm -hmm. You could make deductions on, like, oh, maybe these are the people. Um, but you're not sure. I, uh, once our performance is done, do, do you all clap for us? Please, I mean, <laughs> of course. Validate us. Validate <laughs> us. Yes, exactly. Uh, the bartender also claps. Any other people in here also clap, even though it's yeah. starting to get later. Toss mm -hmm. a coin to your chestnut or wisteria. <laughs> <laughs> I go to do like. A super intricate secret handshake that we had not discussed ahead of time with you. Like, just kind of like. I try and keep up. I'm like. Can we, can we do okay, since we're doing cool things? Can we try to both make a dex check and see if we get the how close sure. we get to the same number? Because I think that'd be hilarious. Yeah, if you get the same number, you magically find the rhythm. I got a 9. I got a 16. Mm. But it goes you, to a 19. Wisteria, ah. you are, like, so confident in doing this, like, wild and crazy <laughs> uh, handshake, and Chestnut's just kind of looking at you and, like, half-heartedly mirroring, but, like, also is very confused as to what exactly is expected of her. It's improv. We're, do we're, we're learning. How do you go, yes and a handshake? <laughs> and then I, I go to sit back down at the table and I go, so, Vic, did you get the girl? No. Oh, so like, the tension I felt, it wasn't like, romantic? No, it was violent. Oh, those <laughs> things are easily confused. <laughs> <laughs> did like the mood change <laughs> no it was uh, I mean it started out sort of cordial but then it kind of that got towards them threatening to take over Claude's farm not quite directly but I felt kind of threatened and l l listen if I feel kind of threatened you know something's fucking wrong so, uh, what we're due to them. Also, just just so I'm just so I'm clear, how the bloody hells do you confuse romance with violence? Uh, well, it's a long story. <laughs> I, like you could hear about it in one of my five poems that I've been writing. It's like an anthology of my romantic and sexual encounters all told. This one time at Bard College. <laughs> one time I feel like Wisteria is the kind of person that has like 
a one woman show or like a one person show just like the kind of ones that are like in the black box theaters in New York where like people start screaming about like having their period or something oh, <laughs> just yeah. like well oh, what's in the serious, row going belfy you know the two bells on the shoes they yeah. did not break it out this time because they had chestnut backing them up like did you like feel like your energy ramp up with the bagpipes because that was pretty fucking cool i don't know how to play the bagpipes i mean i enjoyed the music i didn't enjoy being threatened by an old acquaintance of mine does that like happen often no okay because like, <laughs> i hear a lot because maybe I like breakups and stuff that like there's a common denominator but maybe it's not a you problem with being i did a bleed shagger she's like 20 years me junior and <laughs> with this uh alaxon just kind of walks over and looming over everybody's like i sent the kid it's taken care of and he's gonna go off to his room okay i don't know what you mean but bye <laughs> He sent the that brings Vic a, a mead and uh, sits down with a drink of her own. It's just like, what? what's uh, that lady got against Claude? I don't know specifically, but I'm pretty sure she... What doesn't matter? <laughs> Uh, I, I ain't sure what, uh, what she's got specific, oh, the age gap, I was going to say, and that's, that's probably what it doesn't matter, apparently. No. Um, <laughs> look, I, I don't think it's anything against him necessarily specifically, but I seem to get the distinct impression that, uh, the way she was talking and acting, they, they... They either want Claude to sell up and retire, or they're gonna maybe take his land by force because that one, that graft, yeah, she's uh, pretty headstrong and reckless. And if she ain't changed in the last 20 years, by gum. Do you think we should tell Claude? I believe that's what our scaly friend has already done by sending Sploff. Oh. Great. I was busy performing. Uh, hydrate. So I didn't see anybody, uh, anybody leave. So, like, Claude's the guy with the face, right, that we're working for, just to confirm. Yeah, you he's know, got a face. Yeah, the guy who's all doing that. Most people do. Sorry, I'm still, like, reveling in our performance, you know? Time <laughs> is just a construct, and sometimes you're just, like, not riding with it. Yeah. Do you want a drink? Yeah, it's good to remain hydrated, and I haven't had any lemons in the last two hours. <laughs> okay, I can get some lemon in your drink. Thank you. Just, like, two lemons. <laughs> yeah, in, in a drink. Water. I got you. No problem. Do you need some oyster with that? Yeah, no. but like they're not the same here. You know what no. I mean? No, no actually, no more bloody seafood. Yeah. No, no more I seafood. Have... I okay, no seafood. I'll eat like cheese. But like, you're gonna all have to deal with it when we're in the cart tomorrow. I'm just saying. <laughs> Fucking hell! Roll the windows down. <laughs> it's an open air cart. I hope. Yeah. It's a wagon. It's not that <laughs> fancy, but it, it's... I, I, Again, I, attacking it's my wagon. Twice in one night. Look, crazy. You, know, you know a lot about the things that are like vegetables, but they're not, right? Mushrooms. Yeah. I know about what, I know about these mushrooms, trust me. So, I can tell you anything you need to know. And you, like, know about baking, right? Yes, I do. So, like, I know this, like, oyster lady, and, like, she's wanting to expand her business into other cuisines. She's, like, upstarting with, like, a bunch of other people that she's 
tired. I don't know how it works. You are quite an entrepreneur, Rustari. I like it. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I'm trying to help her make connections because mm. I need connections to oysters. It's a completely selfless thing of me to do. I think my baking might be too experimental for her, but uh, we'll talk. We'll talk about it later. It's okay. Yeah, I can, like, give you their, like, address. <laughs> also, like, you and I were both experimental. <laughs> so and you're just handing phones. randomly out people's addresses now. Yeah. Well, they don't have phones. <laughs> I think, like, as you discuss your business plans for a bakery? Oyster, oyster mushroom vegetable bakery. <laughs> um, Delicious. You all managed to get another night's rest. Everybody is replenished. By the time you wake up in the morning, the rain has stopped. Everything's cleared up. Um, and you can continue on. I will say, um, when you come out in the morning, Chestnut, once again, you don't see anyone from that family that you used to know. Um... And the big house that used to be their house, uh, in kind of the central part, uh, you see Graft out front and a couple other equally rough looking folks. Um, I'll also say everyone can make a perception check as you kind of like clock these people Can I try and um Hey, like, welcome raiders. Oh, raider. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> um, 13. I got oh, 20. Sorry. Can I hail somebody? Like is there anybody like around that I can stop to ask? Sure, there's lots of people milling about. Um actually you you would find some folks that you're familiar with. Um there's still people here that you knew. Uh, yeah. You just don't see that family. Um, I think when you kind of start talking to someone, they kind of like, mm, I can't, I can't. <laughs> it's fine. They left and it's fine. Um, you can Are tell you they're not fine. <laughs> they're just kind of shaking their head like, no, 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 we're not. What? wrong i want to try and persuade them to tell me more yeah go for it i shall um, 23 Ooh, i think um yeah with that i have a persuasion role they kind I of like kind of pull them aside a little bit you know and i'm like are you okay what's wrong something happened didn't it it's just those people, they say they bought the farm. I, we haven't really seen the Millers since they bought the farm. They say they moved to the big city. I don't know, maybe if you see them there next time you're in... Like they would never leave. Riv well, they did. I don't know. They either got an offer they couldn't refuse or got an offer they couldn't refuse. Everybody and they kind of like look over them? their shoulder. And like, as you kind of like look back at that group of people, they all have armor on, they all have weapons. And not a single one of them looks like a farmer. What happened? I don't know. I don't know what they want with the land. It's weird, right? They well, don't look like they know how to use a hoe. They have certainly have never picked up a pitchfork. Mm. And it shows. Yeah. Um, how long ago did this happen? I don't know, a couple weeks ago. A couple weeks ago. 
I heard um, some of the other far smaller farms too have yeah. been getting bought up. That was my next question. Further actually. east. Uh, have you heard? Is there anybody in the middle of a transaction currently that maybe I could uh, talk to? I mean, like as far as selling a farm? Yeah, you know, perhaps they're got their eye on another piece of land. I mean, they said they were looking at Tanza. Oh, a different town, even. Okay, well, we're headed there, so I'll keep an eye out. Um, thank you for the information. If I see the Millers, I will um, try and send them home, if possible. Literally the only, the least fantasy name. Uh, yeah. It was the only <laughs> thing that came into my head. Well, you know, they work the mill. The Millers. Well, yeah. They're very practical that way. It's true. They do grow a lot of grain, so it makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Best flower in that list. Okay, Chestnut is like kind of coming back to the party, like thinking really hard and like biting her nails now. Um, she looks very lost in thought and definitely pretty anxious. Yeah. Um, you all are able to gather your stuff up, and as you're leaving, uh, Graft kind of waves to Vic um, with like the other hand on a sword. Kind of like, um, but you ride off, they stay there. And it's only another couple of hours to get to Tanza. Um, uh, Claude question. greets you all. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, would Splaza have already come back? Because if not, he has the horse. Oh, <laughs> I think... Claude would have given you a couple horses because you probably wouldn't all have fit in the wagon with all the vegetables. So you would have a couple horses, some for riding and some for pulling. So he'd be able to take one and you'd still have some more. Um, when you get there, you see that Sploth is there. Um, Claude is there. Myrtle's there. Mm -hmm. She has like a bed and breakfast. Um, that's her own little business. Um, and uh, Claude kind of comes to talk to you all and he's like Bloth said someone was threatening us. What's going on? Claude, um, there's been a lot of strange activity where mm -hmm. people are like uh possibly forcefully buying up other people's land um, against their will and they're disappearing as well, which is like really weird. And uh, I think Vic said that they might be trying to buy your land. So you should probably be careful. Uh, buy is a euphemism here, Claude. I'm pretty, <sighs> they wanted me to maybe persuade you to sell, mm. to sell up and give up peacefully. Otherwise, I got a nasty feeling just based on uh, who I was talking to, or rather who was talking to me last night, that they might be coming here next with... Uh, how can I put this? They're, they're, they're coming to force, forcibly liberate the land from you. Oh. Mm. Well, I mean... We had some here not too long ago saying they wanted to buy my farm, but the price they offered was ridiculous. I mean, was land ain't of, going for that low. Was one of them an earth genasi who looked kind of rusty by any chance? Sounds familiar. Same one. And there was a, there was also a very fancy fellow sort of like a real tall kind of beautiful person and you might have seen this person in the distance but they weren't anyone in the in the tavern or anything uh he kind of explains this like very tall um kind of slim androgynous uh high elf with like kind of bronzy skin and 
uh, dark black hair. Um, and... Uh, actually, let me roll something for Claude. Um, he does say they were all wearing some sort of, like, mirror pin. It looked like a real fancy mirror, but it was real small. It was just, like, kind of pinning all of their cloaks. I've never seen that before. But, like, as he says that, and you think back to, like, this morning as it's light out, you could see kind of reflective bits on each of them as you were leaving. Would that ring any bells, given Vic's history? Um... Probably not, but I'll say you could make a religion check. It'd be a pretty high DC. Nah, I got an 8 because I'm at minus 1 for my intelligence being an old fart. So, uh, no. <laughs> would you would you tell the rest of us about the pen and stuff oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah i think like he's kind of here with all of you and he's like explaining it it looks like just a very like there's a mirror like a silver mirror with like a very ornate pin like trim and it's like a brooch that pins onto their shoulder or collar or whatever um, so anyone else that feels like it could make a religion check? See, I'm DC really 25. good about praying every night on my knees to things, so I think I know. <laughs> it's a nine. <laughs> you only did slightly better than me, lass. Yeah, like some good meat. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a go. God. So oh now my we God. Can, like, try to all roll the same again. <laughs> Five. <laughs> I mean, at least for me, it checks out because I really don't believe in any gods. Yeah. So. It doesn't seem like... I mean, even for, like... For Lucretia, who's a cleric, who studied in a monastery... We should have rolled higher. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a familiar bit of symbolism. Not sure. Certainly not with the role I got, no. <laughs> uh, okay. So, these mirrors then are a bit of a mystery to all of us, it seems like. I guess so. I've never seen anything like that before. So, you think it means something? I mean, it, if there's I mean, multiple maybe. people wearing them. What do you think, Lord? They, yeah, they were all wearing one, but I don't know if it was like some sort of organization or a guild i don't know if it was a service to some god i've never heard of or or what well i don't know about you boss but i'm here thinking that maybe we've got a bit of a problem on our hands because i'm assuming that you still don't want to sell for such a low price and when you refuse them, they're going to make you the other kind of offer that you can't refuse, at least without, you know, maybe not being put six foot under, if you excuse me, bluntness. Should we, shouldn't we be organising a militia or something? I mean, I hate to do some, such a thing, but perhaps it'd be good to set up a guard if you're thinking there's a threat. Yeah. Why don't y'all, uh, Myrtle kind of walks up. She's like, tell you what, why don't y'all stay here at the bed and breakfast? I'll get you all the food you want, and y'all can take turns kind of setting a guard. What do you think? You have oysters? I don't. I'm sorry. Do you have we don't really have that many up this way. Do, do you have your sausage and biscuits at least? Metal. I can do that. Uh, Y'all know she makes a very good like biscuits and gravy with sausage and. Oh, no. check, folks. Yeah. Oh, posture check. Yeah. Yeah. Here, Artemis. I thought you said sausage egg notes. 
<laughs> yeah, you know those, those sausage egg notes. Oh, and a group hydrate. Right? Come on, y'all. I'm tired of being healthy over here. <laughs> I'm drinking liquid IV, so. Um, if we could get a sponsor, please, like, maybe sponsor us. <laughs> I'd be so happy. Wouldn't have to hydrate like this. Although it is good to drink water. Especially yeah. when you're sitting for long periods of we time. We are your little Tamagotchis. <laughs> <laughs> your feet don't die. Who wants to take which watches? Uh, Alexan will probably take the first watch. And probably tell Sploth. Uh, maybe, maybe go with Chestnut. Okay. Because I don't want to deal with him, for one. Where are we and going? also... For watch. Okay. Oh, I see. I see. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, I want somebody who would be sort of able to keep an eye on him, or at least keep him distracted. There you go. That's the second one. Is more like yeah. <laughs> All right. So you're doing first watch. Yeah. We'll set up three for the time being, because it's starting to get late. I'll do second. I'll do third. I'm gonna sneak out at night and try to... We're in Tanzia, right, again? Yeah. I'm gonna go try to find my criminal contact. So I will try to sneak out during one of the watches. Which watch you can choose, Emily. And somebody will have to perceive me. <laughs> okay. I'm very sneaky. I think. I hope. Uh... <laughs> Go ahead and make your stealth check now. Awesome. And I won't say what watch you're on. It also I probably helps you. that you can make your entire person look different. Yes. That's also true. That is yeah. also true, Rick. You're very right. <laughs> you know, I about your now we're never going to find them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is anyone else jumping into any of the really other watches? You, by the by way. The way. I think Sloth and I are just going to stay up in my room and, like, gossip about stuff, if that's oh, okay. the case. If <laughs> Lexan is going to just, like, pawn him off on me. About um, boys, mostly. Yeah, we're going to sit on my bed, like, cross-legged facing each other and just talk. <laughs> just for the first part of the night? <laughs> yeah, probably. Okay. So, I mean, super important question. Are you painting each other's nails? Does he have nails? I mean, probably. But absolutely, and it is like a purple color. Or, you know, Yay. whatever passes for a fingernail on a frog, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you paint his little okay. toe beans. His little, like, webs? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you can just sing to him and he'll fall asleep and start snoring. Yeah. It's going to be the perfect evening. <laughs> oh, paint his nails when he's asleep. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's so used to going to bed super early. Color. <laughs> he like falls asleep way before anybody <laughs> mostly because I make him but yeah <laughs> hang on just a second I mean he's still a growing boy of like 18 <laughs> or whatever the equivalent is for bully lugs I don't know two oh months gosh. I probably don't remember what I named this Hey, there we go. Jeez. <laughs> okay. Uh, according to the Google, while you're you're looking at stuff, bullywugs are considered mature at age twelve. So he's all of twelve. Aw, he's his all heart. Up. <laughs> Just a little boy. Emily's looking at something. Just checking something. Probably means great things for us. <laughs> That's optimistic. <laughs> okay. And then I'm just going to check one more thing. 
Oops. Okay. All right. Uh, Laxon, I will let you... Actually, Alexan and Wisteria can both roll perception checks, and then Chestnut and Splouth can roll perception with disadvantage. <laughs> could I could I roll investigation instead because it's better? Sure, I'll Sweet. let you do that. I rolled a twenty four. Holy crap! I got a fourteen. <laughs> perception. I got a sixteen. Splouth got. A six. He's asleep. <laughs> he's so yeah, good. He probably is. He's so good. <laughs> okay. He's a very light sleeper, though. I'm like, he's he's got his head in my lap now, and I'm just like giving him a little soft, like, head. If he had hair, I'd be like braiding his hair. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa, what did you get? Uh, great question. 14. 14. Okay. Mysteria got like real high, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And Chestnut got a 16? That's right. Wisteria, what'd you get? A uh, 24. What'd you get for stealth? Uh, 19. Dang. Yeah, pretty good. I'm also going to just check this real quick. Oh, good. I am Plus dying zero. at the, the chat. Draw a dick on his face. <laughs> In purple glitter nail polish. Like you. Oops. I don't want biscuits and gravy. Okay. I would love to eat that. So... You're setting up for first watch, and a couple things happen. First, Laxon, you can hear Splouth trying to sing before he falls asleep. <laughs> oh. uh, he's definitely not as good as Chestnut and Wisteria. <laughs> That's very, very nice. Any he's music sound, up. there's a lot of he's croaking happening. Tumble. Yeah. Um, he's out of tune, and there's, like, weird croaks happening mid-word. Um, poor guy. It's um, like he's singing. Yeah. <laughs> um, You're chirping. You... Nobody sees Wisteria. <laughs> Surprise! Not even Wisteria. Um, <laughs> but... I'll say... <laughs> Because Alaxon is looking for it, and also Wisteria is like sneaking about and looking for someone. You see shadowy movement on the edges of town. People are coming. Um, and Chestnut, you even hear like someone kind of clumsy must have tripped over like a bucket or something uh -huh. so whatever stealth mission is happening coming into this town not successful uh you're able to definitely figure out what's happening you hear people coming you see shadows moving and it does give you both chestnut and alexan would have an opportunity to wake people up if needed. Uh, Wisteria, you are out in the town sneaking around. You see, first of all, someone that you see someone walk up that doesn't even look like they're trying to stealth. A uh, very tall, very kind of sleek looking tan elvish person with long black hair in these kind of like robes um and next to this tall sleek looking elvish person you see graph and i'm gonna say since they didn't surprise y'all and ambush y'all like they wanted to we're going to end this session by oh. rolling initiative <laughs> <laughs>
Spicy. Oh. They one. rolled so poorly. Oh, yeah. You're gonna write there. down what we're rolling, right? Yes. Just Let roll. me just write these down okay. first. I rolled an eight. Hey, give me just a second. I rolled you a 10. Okay, 10 for Lucretia. 8 for Wisteria. Mm -hmm. All right, what else we got? Vic got a 21, but it's a 19 rather than Alexa's tw nat 20. <laughs> Which was a total of 21. Yeah. Nice. Oh, gotcha. Is that everybody? No. I no. got a nice firm nine. <laughs> okay. Ooh, ten, nine, eight. Yeah, eleven. Eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I have our initiative. It's eleven thirty. So I'm gonna say we're gonna end there for tonight. So I can make sure I have a map ready for everybody next week. <laughs> well, not next week. Two weeks. Two weeks from tonight, because next week is the My Monty Python one shot. And Sophia's um, birthday. And Sophia's birthday, yeah, birthday, which means you're all obligated to come watch. Um, <laughs> unless you're also playing in a game, which some folks might be. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to go through just our announcements again uh thank you all so thank you all so much for joining us tonight for session one of our summer little series um i hope you liked it um hope you liked meeting all of our characters and kind of getting acquainted with this world of bankar and uh where they, where they all are, this, like, nice, idyllic farming community where nothing bad ever happens, for sure. X to death. Uh, nothing suspicious. Right, definitely, absolutely. Um, <laughs> of course, our sponsor tonight was Canadian Dice. Make sure you go to canadiandice.ca and use the code THEVOCTAIR, all one word, to get 10% off your order. Um, we're also raising money for the Trevor Project, so don't forget to donate to the Trevor Project using the link at the top of our chat this month. Um, they provide youth and crisis support services to LGBTQIA2S plus people um, in Mexico and the United States now. Um, also make sure you pick up your Pride merch at tinyurl.com forward slash vac merch. Um, there's some real fun stuff in there. Affy did an amazing job. The Pride merch looks awesome. Um, also, don't forget that tomorrow, Affy and Artemis will be on Goodman Games Official at 9 p.m. playing Mutant Crawl Classics. Um, Tim from Stronghold D&D is going to be a guest. Um, then Thursday, we have a song of Crystal and Shadow with DM Sophia uh, at 8.30 Eastern. It's a Final Fantasy D&D game. There's a couple seats open if you feel like joining in. If you've been trying to get into a game on the Vectair, that's a perfect opportunity. Uh, Friday, we're not having Fixius 5. We're doing a playtest of Jeremy and Ryan's Cirque du Solis one-shot. Uh, so check that out. Saturday morning, 11.30 a.m. is Together Among the Stars with Asparagus 93. And me. And Rick. Um, of course, but you're there every <laughs> <That> day. <laughs> um, Sunday, Affy and Artemis will be back on DM Jeremy's channel for Legacy of Fire at 7.30. Monday, Mist Walkers at 8.30 with DM Affy on this channel. And then next Tuesday, of course, Super Gay Monty Python one shot on this channel as well. 8.30, right? Yeah. Uh, so check all of that stuff out. Check our social media for our schedule in case you're unsure of anything. And it's been really fun. 
to play with all of you. I hope you had a good time. Oh, yeah. And I hope you're excited to do combat things next week. Next two weeks from now. Dang it. <laughs> Probably also <laughs> next week because Monty Python will be. Yeah, I'm gonna they, wow. might, they might do some kinds of combat. Depends on where they go and who they encounter and stuff. And there may yeah. or may not be gay frogs. Yes. Who knows? There may or may not be. There's definitely gay frogs in our game. <laughs> so if you miss, if you don't get any next week, you can come back in two weeks and watch us again. And we'll be here all summer. So every couple of weeks, check us out. Uh, it's been fun hanging out. Sophia, if you could take us out. I, I don't know if we're raiding someone. I don't know how we to do that. We are raiding Jer. That is all, cool. uh, that is all uh, Affy and Artemis. Nice. So, outro, here we come. Awesome. Hi. Hi, folks. <laughs>